good morning to good you. Good morning. And Sir Malcolm, if you were still a foreign secretary in government, would you be in Moss School this morning? No, I wouldn't. I think uh, the decision of Boris Johnson was a very difficult decision because he was going to be criticised either way. But the big issue at this moment in time is the consequences of the American airstrike on uh, Syria. It's the Rex Tillerson, uh, Sergei Lavrov meeting that counts. Anything else would have been an hors d'oeuvre before the, great, the big meal itself. Now, uh, Sir Malcolm, you are a seasoned diplomat. Uh, you know the way these things work. Looking at the Russian situation and all this aggression, everybody's talk, talk and it's all very hot at the moment. Is there a way that Russia can save face in all of this? I mean, there's going to be an ultimatum delivered this week from the G7. What's well, the way out for Russia? Look, uh, I, I think what uh, President Trump did last week was right uh, after the chemical attack. It sent a very clear signal, and I think that will work. But I think I'm getting concerned by some of the language being used, things like ultimatums, and there'll be further sanctions and so forth. What the Russians understand is power, not rhetoric or grand words. Now, what the Americans did with the attack uh, resulting from the chemical weapons, that was real power, and that means we will not have any more chemical weapons attacks by Assad. Uh, to start now trying to suggest to the Russians that we demand that they withdraw from their support from Assad and Assad must go, of course we'd all love to see that. But that is rhetoric unless it's matched by a promise of action. And the, the, the action can't be sanctions. We've already got sanctions against Russia. Uh, the few more sanctions that might be available aren't going to make much difference. The, the, the other point I have to make uh, is that whether we like it or not, because of the help from the Russians, Assad is much stronger today than he was two years ago. He controls far more Syrian territory. To insist that he cannot be part of the negotiations to end this war is simply <coughs> unrealistic, I'm afraid. If Assad is the wrong leader, who is the right leader? You've got to have a plan that actually sounds as if you can implement that plan, otherwise it's just empty rhetoric again. Uh, I agree with Emily Thornberry that uh, Assad cannot be part of the long-term future of Syria. The crucial point at this moment in time is, is the United States, is the United Kingdom and, other Western, uh, and our other Western countries going to say he cannot even be part of some transitional arrangement to a new situation in Syria? Now, if they say that, yeah. they're wasting their breath. Uh, the Russians have invested a huge amount of capital in supporting Assad. He's actually winning. Uh, unless the Americans are contemplating further military action, which they say they're not at this moment in time, unless they are contemplating that, there is no way you, the West can budge the Russians or the Iranians or Hezbollah from helping Syria. And if there's therefore to be a negotiated solution, the people round that table must be the Syrian opposition and they must be representatives of the Syrian government. Now, I, I, as much as anyone could possibly want to see the end of Assad, he's a terrible despot. But the fact is you cannot insist on unconditional surrender unless, as in 1945, your armies are marching across Europe towards Berlin at the time.